in a time when we're really focused on looking for racial justice, we must understand you can't have racial justice without algorithmic justice, just as you can't have algorithmic justice without racial justice. Hi everyone, I am Elaine Welteroth and I am so honored to be sharing this digital space with someone who I consider a real life superhero. Um, Joy Boylamwini, thank you so much for being here today with, with, uh, with all of us. It's so good to see you. I wish we were here in person. Most of us have a very basic understanding of AI. We think of it as something that can sort of power our smartphones um, and, and our smart technology, maybe in our homes, but it's much more ubiquitous than that, isn't it? And I, I mean, I want to hear you talk about how AI affects our daily lives um, and how it permeates our sort of work and our day-to-day -day functioning in ways we may not even be aware of. Absolutely. And so when you talk about AI, it can mean many things. When I'm thinking about AI, I think about the ways in which we can help computers perceive the world. AI systems that are making judgments or discern and so determining um, if you're going to be a good employee, if you are credit worthy or not, even who you see uh, in a dating app as well. And so AI touches so many areas of our lives, determining if you get hired or fired, what kind of access to medical uh, treatment uh, you have. It's something that involves everybody. And you see it in education, you see it in healthcare, you see it in the workplace. So I have this term called uh, failed machine learning. And machine learning is when we have AI systems learning from data, hence machine learning, failed machine learning, failing freedom, money, love. So when we talk about freedom, you can think about AI systems being used as carceral uh, technology or in the criminal justice um, space. So that example of face recognition, somebody being uh, misidentified. And so that's on the freedom side. On the money aspect, you have algorithms that are being used in hiring processes. There's a company called HireVue. They do video interviews of candidates and they're scanning your face. They're analyzing your voice to see if you have cues of what a top employee looks like. And then when we're thinking about money, right, we're also thinking about educational opportunities. You just have the case in the UK where students were given automated grades, not based on their capacity, but based on their zip code. So there you get zipped out of opportunity when you have inequity zipped into the kinds of systems that are determining our future. So when I talk about failed machine learning, failing freedom, money, love, if you have any stake in having a job, you know, if you have any stake in terms of love or interpersonal relationships, you have a place in this conversation. Wow. Wow. I know everyone um, listening right now is having one of these moments. So can you talk about sort of the impact of exclusion on technology um, and how you personally um, work through that sort of deeply personal process of showing up as your authentic self, even when you're in spaces where there is no one else who looks like you? Yes, as you know, some of us are one of one. We pioneer and we enter spaces that weren't necessarily created with us in mind. And I actually view my identity and my lived experience as an advantage. There's so many people who are in the computer vision world, but not so many people were bringing attention to these biases, facial analysis and recognition systems. And what we're showing about algorithmic bias impacts everybody. And yet also in a time when we're really focused on looking for racial justice, we must understand you can't have racial justice without algorithmic justice, just as you can't have algorithmic justice without racial justice. In what ways can we all take responsibility for um, opening the door and bringing in more, more people of color, more black women, to the table, uh, specifically in, 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 in technology, in, in terms of the fields of technology? Yes, absolutely. So I think about a, a few inclusion imperatives. So one, dare to ask. Ask who's missing, 
as whose voice is not in the room. If we're looking at AI and you ask who's missing, right, you're going to see that oftentimes it's the people who are most marginalized and most likely um, to be harmed. The other thing is to dare to listen. It's not just enough to bring people in, hear their piece, but then not implement what they're saying. And so we really have to ask ourselves, are we doing token participation? Because even if you bring in different faces, if you don't change the system, it's not going to make a long-term impact. I like to point out for my project with the mirror, I made that project, but how did I build it? Using existing libraries, right? The status quo. So if we don't shift the status quo, our ways of doing things, and we just populate it with new, more inclusive faces, we're not getting at the radical, the root, the systemic change um, that needs to happen. Everyone turn on your facial, facial recognition block. We're here to make a plan can nobody stop. Everyone turn on your facial, facial recognition block. We're here to make a plan Nobody stop. Everyone turn on.